please to the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, Matthew chapter seven. This morning we had a Sunday school hour, and we were actually teaching on this chapter in the Word of God uh, from Matthew's gospel, chapter seven, and also Luke's gospel account of this same story in Luke chapter 6. Now I'll be referring to both portions of scripture uh, during the course of this message. But this morning I'm preaching on the wise builder. The wise builder. And the word of God says in Matthew chapter 7, remember in the context of this chapter, this is the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached beginning in Matthew chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 and we find many wonderful truths that the Lord taught in this sermon he gave us the Beatitudes among many things and then at the conclusion of this sermon he tells the story about uh, the wise and the foolish builder I want us to look in beginning in verse number 21 for the reading of God's word not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say, notice I'm emphasizing the word say and the word do. Uh, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass that Jesus, that when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. May we pray together. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word, and we pray you'll bless these next few moments you've given as we come to the very most important part of this service. All is leading us up to this very moment as we open the word of God. The music has prepared our hearts to receive what you have for us. And now we pray that you would open our hearts and minds of understanding Help us to see truth today, and more importantly, help us to do the truth. He that doeth these sayings of mine is a wise builder, and help us to leave this place with a determination to build our lives upon a solid foundation of God's Word, and we'll give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Many of you are familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was built in 1174 by an Italian architect who built the bell tower there for the cathedral of the city of Pisa, Italy. This Leaning Tower is eight stories tall, 185 feet tall, eight stories, with just one little problem. Builders quickly discovered through the years that the soil was much softer than they had anticipated and the foundation was far too shallow. And soon the builders began to realize that the structure began to tilt, even more so as the years go by. The leaning tower of Pisa is, will one day fall if something is not done to, to correct these things. Now, there's been many things through the years that scientists and builders have done to, to delay the inevitable. But they tell us that 
the tower moves at one twentieth of an inch every year. Now it's 18 feet out of plumb, out of line. And one day it's going to fall because it was built on a faulty foundation. I find it ironic today that um, the word Pisa, or Pisa, however you want to say it, means marshy land. <laughs> a marshy land. Uh, which goes to show us, uh, gives us a clue on why the problem exists today. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 6 and verse number 19, the Word of God says, Now we should lay up treasures for ourselves upon a good, we should laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. I'm reminded here as I've read this text today, in this story, we see two foundations. We see two builders. We see two houses. And we see, we see two different results. And I want to bring a point, bring across several truths today about building on a wise foundation. I want you, first of all, to consider the comparisons. The comparisons between these two builders. This short parable appears to speak of two very different types of people. But there's something we can compare about these two builders. Uh, there's, there's a comparison here of one man. And this one man gave careful consideration to the foundation that he was building upon. And this other man gave no thought at all to the foundation that he was building upon. And, uh, but notice the, the comparison here, the things that we see in common. I want you to notice that both men built houses. Both men built houses. Each of them built houses the way differently. I'm sure they had similar materials. Both built probably from a similar design. Uh, from the outside, both of these houses may have looked very much alike. Both men built houses. As a matter of fact, you may not be able to tell from the outside, looking at both houses, that you couldn't tell much difference. And that's the comparison here, is that we see both men built houses. I want to also make this observation that both men built in the same location. They built in the same location. Verse 27 kind of tells us that uh, this storm came. And the storm that came affected both houses. Uh, which means both houses must have been built in close proximity to one another. And so we see that both men built houses. Both men built in the same location. And may I say a third point of comparison. Both men encountered the same storm, the same storm that beat upon both houses in the same way, vehemently, the Bible says. I want you to look in, uh, with me in Luke's gospel of this account. Would you look there in Luke chapter 6 in just a moment? And would you look in verse number 46 as we read Luke's account of this same story? Luke 6 and 46, And why call ye... Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was built founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without Without a foundation, notice this, without a foundation he built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. We see here that both men encountered the same storm. So this is the comparisons that we see of the two builders. I want you to see secondly this morning, I want you to consider the contrast 
There's something alike I've just showed you, but there's also something very different. And we see the contrast here in not the two builders, but the two different foundations. And I'm going somewhere with this, so follow me, stay with me. As a matter of fact, if you stop and think about the house that you live in right now, and the house that I live in right now, and the house that we, my wife and I sold in Fort Myers, Florida, if you were to ask us to describe the house that we lived in there for many years, I would probably talk to you about the color of the house that we chose and the design and the square footage. I could talk to you about the size of the lot. I could talk to you about the location, the neighborhood, the number of bedrooms, the layout, all of those things. And you'd probably say the same things about the house you live in, but none of us would talk about the foundation. <laughs> but may I say this morning, the foundation's a very, very important part of the house that we live in. Amen? And that's the point that Jesus was trying to get across here, is that the foundation makes all the difference in the world when we start to build. We're building. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse number 3, Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. And this is not only true of the physical house that we live in, but it's also true of the homes that we're building. Our homes should be built upon wisdom and understanding of God's Word. While there are several similarities, comparisons I've brought to your attention this morning, uh, there's also both of these houses, there's also the contrast. And the contrast was not in the material that was built, but in the foundation that it was built upon. This morning, don't confuse the building material with the foundation. I know many people today that talk about their baptism. They talk about their church membership. And they talk about their good moral life. And they talk about their good habits. And they talk about uh, all kinds of things, but they neglect the foundation. The Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. This morning you may have some good material that you're seeking to build with, but if you don't have the foundation right, if it's not being built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not going to stand the test, it's not going to stand the storm. It's not going to survive the storm. When the storms come, you can have good material, but if it's not built on a solid foundation, it will not survive the test of the storms of life. And that's the lesson we learned here. The contrast is one man built his house on sand. The other man built his house on the rock. That's the difference. That's the contrast. Think about this man that built his house on the sand. Very little preparation. The Bible says he had no foundation and he built his house on the earth, on the sand. Sand is unstable. It's ever changing. It's ever moving. It offers no stability. Sand is not a good place to build a house. Sand does not provide a good foundation. It's shifting, shifting sands we hear and read about. In this context, building on the sand speaks about people today who hear the gospel, but instead of believing the gospel, they build their house on the shifting sands of their own self-will, their own self-fulfillment and self-sufficiency and self-satisfaction and self-righteousness. They're building on shifting, sinking sand. Theirs, in this context, is a work salvation that has appearance of being right. Jesus said, Many shall say unto me, Lord, have we not done all these good works in your name? And have we not cast out devils in your name? And have we not done these good things in your name? But Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. You didn't build it on the right foundation. It were, you did some good things, but it wasn't built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock of our salvation. Amen? Christ is the rock. And there's so many today that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such turn away, the scripture says. There are people today that build on the sand because building on the sand is easy. 
It takes no preparation. It takes no thought. You don't have to do a lot of work to do that. My wife and I decided to, we built a little 10 by 12 shed in the back of our house in Florida. And I would have to drive my John Deere lawnmower up into this shed to, and shut the door, of course. And, and I would have to put two two by sixes out as ramps. Every time I went to put my lawnmower up and down, I'd pull the boards out and I finally got tired of it and I said, let's just build a ramp, you know, build a ramp. And so we decided to pour it out of concrete. <laughs> That's one of the craziest things, decisions I've ever made. <laughs> and I didn't realize all the work involved in building the foundation for this ramp. I mean, you had to go and dig down. You had to make sure it was level. and You had to put in the rock, the fill, the gravel, and, and to make sure it was plumb and stake it off. And you had to frame it in with two-by-fours. And then once all that was done, that was quite a day's work. And then came the, the hard part of mixing all the concrete. And here I am taking these 50-pound bags of concrete and dumping them into a wheelbarrow. And Mandy's got the hose. And... I'm trying to mix this mud, and they call it chopping mud. How many of you ever chopped mud before? You chop it, you know. It has to be a right consistency. And then I realized my ramp is too big. I, I can't get, it's going to take about 20 bags of concrete to get in the hole, and it's setting up on me before I can get the others mixed. So now I had this wise idea to put a divider board in the middle of it. And just do one half at a time. And then do the other half. And I'm telling you what, by the time I got finished, those eight, it took 18 bags of 50-pound concrete to build this ramp. i never seen my wife work so hard. No, no. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that shed may blow away with the next hurricane, but that ramp will be there until Jesus comes. It was built on the right foundation. It was built right. Was it built on the sand? It took some effort. So one man built on the sand, but the other man was wise because he built on the rock. He built on the rock. And I could say a lot about that. How many of you ever seen the, the picture of the, the lighthouse, the iconic lighthouse? It's called the Bell Rock Lighthouse in Scotland. It's the world's oldest surviving sea-washed lighthouse. It was built on an acre of solid rock in the middle of the North Sea. You ever seen a picture of that in some of the paintings? It stands and the waves are beating, are wrapping around this lighthouse. It's been standing that way for years, more than over 200 years, and it still stands because it was built on a solid acre of rock in the middle of the sea. I'm saying today that it's very important that we build on the right foundation. One man built on the house, the sand, the other man dug deep. He found, he found the foundation of rock and he built on that bedrock the house that survived the storm. And building on the rock means that we hear the gospel and we believe it. We build our lives on it. These sayings of mine, Jesus said. He's talking about the rock of the gospel. These sayings of mine. Rock builders. Understand that Jesus alone has the power to save. And rock builders hear the Word of God. We, we do the Word of God. And uh, we don't build on shifting sand. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. I'm saying this morning, what is your foundation being built upon? So we see the comparisons, the two men. We see the contrast, the two foundations, one sand, one rock. And lastly, I want you to consider the consequences, the results. We see two separate results here. This parable tells us the rain came, the floods came, the winds of destruction blew, and we have this image in our mind of a house being built upon the sand and it begins to deteriorate. It begins to wash away. And the Bible goes on to say, Great was the fall of it. The house was utterly destroyed. 
There was nothing left to show. Nothing left but hopes, dreams, plans, efforts, works. Nothing left to show. And by the way, this is a picture of what happens to every person who builds their life on anything besides the Lord Jesus Christ. There's coming a day of judgment when the winds will blow and there will be many houses that will crumble because their foundation was never built upon the Lord Jesus. They put their trust in religion, in good works, and in their own morality, in their good deeds. But it was never built on the Lord Jesus Christ. And great will be the fall of it. But the house that was built on the rock uh, suffered the same storm, the same rain, the same floods, but it stood, it weathered the storm. And may I say this morning, everybody in this room today is building a spiritual house. All of us are. If you know the Lord as your Savior, you're building a spiritual house, all of us. Every day we live, we are Attaching boards, driving nails, adding to rooms, trying to make improvements. We ought to be to our spiritual house. But what matters most, the point I'm trying to get across this morning, what matters most is the foundation that we build on. The foundation that we build on is what matters most. Because sometimes, somewhere, someday, the storm is going to come. And the storms of life will reveal the foundation you've been building on. Are you listening? The storms of life will reveal the foundation that you've built on. May I say this morning that the time to build the foundation is not in the middle of a storm. It's not the time when it's raining to get concerned about the foundation. The time to build the foundation is in the sunny days. The Bible says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. That's the time to build the foundation, is in the sunny days, when the storm is not here, because, dear friend, the storm will come. There's coming some bad weather to all of us in days ahead. And what matters most is the foundation that we're building upon. You can't build the foundation in the rain. As a matter of fact, I know people who lay sidewalks that when the rain comes, the work stops. You cover it with a tarp and you come back another day. <clears throat> You don't build the foundation of the rain. So how can you and I this morning build on the right foundation? How can we build? I think three simple phrases I want to give to you. If you want to write them down or think about them. The wise builder is someone who, first of all, he accepts the word of God. He accepts it. He that heareth these sayings of mine. In other words, he hears, he listens, he's in tune. He hangs on every word of the Word of God. When someone's teaching, when someone's preaching, when you're reading, the wise builder accepts the Word. He, he hears it. Number two, he adapts to the Word. He doeth. He adapts to it. It's more important, it's, more, it's not enough just to hear the Bible. The Bible says, be ye not, not just hearers, but doers of the word in the book of James. Is that right? The wise builder hears, but he also does. He, he, he doeth. He adapts to the word. He acts upon what he hears. The storms will come. And Jesus didn't pull any punches here. He Just look at this word, and. Jesus didn't say if the rains descend and if the floods come and if the winds blow, but he said and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. I'm saying the storms of life are going to come, 
And our obedience to Christ doesn't mean that we're not going to get rained on. <laughs> but our obedience to God's Word means that the house will stand. It will survive the storm. Your life will stand. Your home will stand. Your teenagers can stand. They can survive the storms of life. The devil will send our way if it's built on the right foundation. Amen? A wise builder accepts the word. He adapts to the word. In 1992, my wife and I moved to Fort Myers. We left the church in Atlanta and resigned and had a gracious departure and had a wonderful ministry there. We moved to Southwest Florida and the first year, the hurricane, Andrew, came from the east coast of Miami and swept across the southern end of Florida. 100 mile an hour winds, Homestead, Florida, much of it destroyed. Pastor Charles Cooey, a good older friend of mine, a man kind of cut out of the same cloth as Pastor Calvin Fuller, that, that, that era, just a great warrior of the faith, lost his church down to the foundation. Over a thousand people attended that church in Homestead. They never recovered from that. I'm saying that when that storm came, on one street it looked like a war zone, wreckage everywhere. But there was a house that remained standing. I understand tornadoes. How many have seen tornadoes can come down a road and take one house and leave the other one standing beside it? But a hurricane doesn't select and choose like a tornado does. A hurricane just wipes through the whole neighborhood. But this one house was standing when the neighbor's houses on both sides had fell. And they were interviewing. The reporter came to the homeowner and interviewed him. And he said something along the lines as, I built this house myself. I built it according to the Florida State Building Code. When the code called for a two-by-six roof trusses, I used two-by-six roof trusses. He said, there are some other friends of mine on this block that took shortcuts. But I built my house according to the standards of the building code. That's why it's still standing. I thought as I read that, uh, there are a lot of people today that are trying to raise children and teenagers and trying to have marriages, and they're looking for shortcuts. There's no shortcut. You and I are going to have to turn to God's Word and decide by the grace of God and we're going to build our home, build our lives, build our marriages, build our, raise our children, our teenagers based on what God's Word says. This is the guidebook. This is the code book. If you take shortcuts with the foundation, it'll show up somewhere down the road. The wise builder accepts the Word. He adapts to the Word. And lastly, he abides in the Word. He abides. And may the Lord help us today to be wise builders. To be wise builders. May we pray together.